Okay, here we are in sunny Soldotin, Alaska. And here we are with Rob Taylor, Bearhawk Builder Extraordinaire. <laughs> this is Rob's project. The whole idea behind uh, us building Bearhawks in Alaska anyway are to make sure that we can go have fun with them. And part of the deal is to put them on floats so we can go fly at some remote lakes and some rivers and go about and do this. Rob is a very experienced mechanic. He's now working for BP, but he's also an ex-recovering A&P. <laughs> Knows what it takes to do a certified. That's why he's doing experimental. So, but anyway, this is Rob's Bearhawk project. He's got an Avapro quick build kit. And one of the things we decided to do is to put him on floats. And we went ahead and uh, kind of looked at different floats and Float combination for this aircraft, overfloating a little bit, but seems to be fine, would be Edo 2870s. They're plentiful floats. They're uh, well-performing float. There's just a lot of good things about them, and they match the Bearhawk lines really well as well. So that's why the 2870s. Rob picked these up up at Merrill Field. They actually came out of McGrath, but uh, they're in fine shape, really nice floats. Rob's done a few modifications on the floats. So you can see he went ahead and moved the pump out cups from on the top and moved them over to the side, which is really nice. It's a nice feature. Uh, new spreader bars. The old spreader bars had a little bit of corrosion issues, but the owner of the floats went ahead and threw in a new set of spreader bar material, and Rob went ahead and cut those down to size and made them identical to the ones that were taken off. But going on to the float installation, here we got the, the steps that are on the on the struts, just a general overview of how it's all put together. And you can see there's a little bit of reinforcement here uh, for that rear attaching point where the cargo door is. A uh, mall does that as well in some of their aircraft, and uh, that's discussed actually in another portion of uh, the website group about uh, the debate whether to put anything back there or not. But Rob and I both agree that there needs to be something there. I have an opportunity to do it a little bit differently because I'm scratch building my fuselage. But this is the installation and basically the mock-up. This is not the final installation because obviously there has to be some, uh, some wires done in between there and that's uh, what it is. But it's rigged basically the way it's going to sit on the aircraft. So I'll, I'll stop talking, I'll let Rob talk and tell him, see what he has to say exactly how he made this all happen because he's the one that actually did all the noodling out for this. So Rob, if you would do a quick overview of how you, how you went ahead and uh, figured out how to do the whole thing on the, the float install. Well, after a lot of research on the internet and books and also experience working on other float planes, I've seen things that work and things that don't work and try to take the best of everything and put it together to make something that's simple and would work and uh, that could be done in a shop without a lot of expensive tooling. So this is the result of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, uh, what, one thing that's missing in the back where it was before when Rob was doing all the mock-up, he had uh, quite a little setup here on the tail so he could adjust the fuselage forward and back. Uh, you want to take us through how you went through uh, determining the float angle because that's one of the critical critical parts of attaching the, the floats to the fuselage. Well, as you can see, there's levels in many different locations on the airplane to allow us to level not only the floats left to right and fore and aft, but also to level the fuselage. The leveling tubing on the fuselage is the section from B to D where the smart tool is right now. Mm -hmm. We've also set up levels across the fuselage and uh, this gives us a reference. The, f the floats were put on the bench uh, cart here which is also for launching them later when the plane's completed and we rolled them underneath the fuselage and the fuselage was suspended in the air then lowered it down and we had already leveled up the floats as level as we could possibly get them and then we set the fuselage down on top of it. We had to start somewhere, so we used the forward and the diagonal struts are the same as the 180, they haven't been changed. We made up our own 
uh, attachment blocks out of 2024 T3 aluminum to work for us. Kept them as mm -hmm. short as possible. And uh, then what we did is we started lowering and raising the tail to get the angle of incident, uh, the angle of the floats uh, to the center line of the airfoil. Mm -hmm. According to the internet research we've done, you'd like the floats to be two to four degrees down from the angle of the center line of your airfoil. So they're actually down in relation to the airport. So we came up with a medium, we went for three degrees and shot for that and adjusted the tail stand, which is now gone, and set the fuselage down and set the rear struts up to where we could get an idea of what you'd have to do to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Since these floats came off of Cessna 180, we didn't expect them to be the same. But as it turned out, we shortened the struts in the rear that much. <laughs> and uh, that was done with a bandsaw. And then we were able to put the uh, pre-made welded fittings on there temporarily. And the 2024 T3 blocks that go in there uh, and push these struts up to them. If you come mm -hmm. around this side, Paul, you can get better. Okay, yeah. Let me go around here. Of course, the rear fittings are not completely welded yet. That will happen after the floats are removed and the fuselage is put back in the rotisserie, which basically rotates the whole fuselage 360 degrees to get the best welding angle. Mm -hmm. But they were put on there temporarily with hose clamps and tack welded. And you can see um, the wires, as Paul mentioned, have, are not the final wires. We're trying to come up with some flying wires, which are going to be shorter than a Cessna 180 by several inches to make it come out. But these were used for a mock-up to where we could rig up the airplane, get it level, and where you could actually sit in the plane as though we're completed. Um, yeah, one thing that I think it's really important to note right here is that uh, the whole idea behind uh, the install here is to make it simple as possible. And we were pretty, pretty confident that the Cessna 180 uh, install would be very compatible with the Bearhawk design. And it's critical because on these floats, if you look at these attaching blocks, the angle is preset. There's no, there's no room. You can move the struts fore and aft, but you can't move the angle uh, either towards, you know, this way, what I'm saying, uh, either vertical or horizontal. They're set. But a huge advantage to this is these struts, the length is absolutely perfect for the install and just having to cut these down as opposed to having to um, buy new strut material, which is a huge advantage and it makes the install quite a bit better. And the other thing that Rob did, Rob, why don't you go over your, uh, your install for the for picking up the water rudders? Because I think that's pretty unique as well. Oh, okay. Um, I, I've built planes in the past and I've seen other planes and I try to keep it as simple as possible. You can make it really complex or you can make it pretty simple. Uh, I like to keep things to where both people, uh, pilot or co-pilot, can operate it. It's something that's easy to make and uh, it doesn't get in the way. And the Bearhawk's got a lot going on down there. You've got a fuel tank selector, a flap handle, mm -hmm. and also your water rudders in close proximity to each other. So you don't want to make sure that things don't get bound up. So anyway, all we used was a simple cable arrangement with a bent piece of tubing that was welded and installed into the bottom of the fuselage and is removable and it's slotted to where this can be removed completely. There'll be a grommet right here where the aluminum skin uh, contacts this. So you can pull the grommet out and this can slide out. This cable, of course, goes to the rear and attaches to the uh, water rudders and is removable. So in the off season, you can either take and coil the cable up inside and keep it in place, or you can take three screws out and you can remove the whole, mm. the whole thing. Yep. And you know, you're all set. One thing important to note is that a water rudder, if you're not familiar with float flying, it's almost like another flight control, so you have to uh, make sure that it's uh, very reliable in this operation because without water rudders, you can get in a lot of trouble. And you can see up here Rob's install. I'll climb up inside so okay. we can demonstrate. So you can operate it? Okay. Very good. And uh, just for the record, I've already been inside making airplane noises. It's pretty cool. It's <laughs> It's pretty neat. But you've got the rudder controls and elevators. 
you've got your flaps right here. You also have this which is spring loaded. It'll come down to about here when the floats are all hooked up. Right about there. You can operate your fuel selector valve easily. Your rudder, uh, your flaps. It's important that this can't come over this. That's why the strut is welded. So there's no way that you can foul flaps with your water rudder. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. It hooks up here. You lift against the spring this last inch and it drops down. You lift up, which you have to go up in order to come off, and then down. And your water rudders drop by springs in the back. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple and it works. Very good. Anyway, that's the quick overview, and when I mean quick overview, although it took probably about 10 minutes worth of video time, it is a very quick overview because uh, Rob makes it simple. It's actually a very complex uh, install to make sure that all the angles are correct and make sure everything is squared up because there's so many variables in this install. But the end result speaks for itself. It's a very clean install. Very little modification had to be done with the floats itself and the spreader bars and with the uh, with the strut material, really the only modification needed to be done is shortening these two aft struts from the Cessna 180 install and then of course the fabrication of the aluminum blocks and the rear float fittings. So that's about it. So we'll hopefully make a uh, make one more video when we get the flying wires installed, or I should say we, Rob, when <laughs> Rob gets the flying, <laughs> flying wires installed. It's a group effort. That's right, yeah, but anyway there you go. Say goodbye, Rob. Goodbye, Rob.